This video will be on the prediction feature of fish networking. You can find the source files under tutorial source files and a prediction folder. Links will be in the description of this video. Prediction is used to have a real time response on the client so that it feels like you're moving as you're using your inputs and you actually are. It also ensures that the client cannot cheat their movement on the server. This is often a task that people will struggle with and fish networking not only makes it easy, but it's the only solution to provide this feature for free. No other networking solution offers this technology at no cost. Let me demonstrate how it works. I'm going to go ahead and hit play in the editor and I have another build up. I'm going to run the build as a client and I'm going to run the editor as the server. So as I move around the client, you can see that it is moving one to one in the server. Now the thing is, I'm not using a network transform, I'm actually synchronizing using the server authoritative movement and you can see that it's all happening in real time. Now I'm going to reverse the roles and watch what happens when the client tries to cheat. I'm going to run the executable as a server and the editor as client. I'm going to select my player and then modify my move rate to something rather high. Let's go ahead and change it to let's say 90. Now if I try to move around, you can see it's jittering a bit. That's because the server is stopping the client from cheating. But you'll also notice that they're moving at the exact same speed even though they changed their move rate. With this technology, you get the benefit of server authoritative movement so the client can't cheat, but also real-time response. Let's go take a look at the code and talk about this more. This class is what's responsible for the rigid body movement you just saw, the server protection, and all that good stuff. It might look a little long, but most of it's actually just comments and I'm going to go over it with you. You can see that the code bits actually aren't that complex. I'm using two data groups here to handle the server authoritative movement and these can be named whatever you like, but I'm calling mine move data and reconcile data. I also strongly encourage you to use structures for your data groups because they are cached and if you use classes, you're going to get quite a bit of garbage collection and you really don't want that. First is move data. I use this to store the inputs on my client and then it moves the object identically on the server as well the owning client. Next is the reconcile data. This contains information about how to reset the object to the server values. The server will set these values and then send them to the client. In the reconcile data, you will specify anything that will affect the transform and how it moves. In my data for this basic rigid body movement, I'm resetting the position, the rotation, the velocity, and the angular velocity. These are all values related to the transform movement. And going down, we have a few variables here. We have the move rate, which is how fast this object can move. You saw me modify that earlier. A rigid body reference, which is just the rigid body that I'm going to add force to. And we have this boolean called subscribe. And this is whether I am subscribed to the time manager or not. Typically, when you work with physics, you will move your physics objects in fix update. However, Fish Networking has a special time manager used to synchronize the server and the client together. When working with server authoritative movement or prediction, you will need to use the time manager callbacks instead of fixed update. And this is just changing the subscription status to those particular events. And that's something I'll cover in just a moment. In a wake, I'm going to get the rigid body component. Nothing fancy going on there. Next, I have the subscribe to time manager method, and this is where I change my subscription. I have some basic checks here. Exit the method if time manager is null. If the subscription status is already what I'm trying to change it to, also exit the method. This is so I don't accidentally subscribe to the events twice. That would be bad. And then lastly, of course, I change my subscription. I'm using the on tick and on post tick methods. On tick is the equivalent to fixed update for Unity. This is called right before a physics simulation. On post tick is right after the physics simulation has occurred. And with that in mind, going down to on destroy, I simply unsubscribe from the time manager since I no longer need those events. I wait until on start client and on start server to subscribe because the time manager in the base class will not be known until these call. And as we just talked about, we have the on tick method and right below that, the on post tick method. If you are not using a physics based controller, such as the character controller or just moving the transform in general, you do not need the on post tick and I will explain why later. Next, we're going to wrap some logic in an owner check. The owner is going to be controlling the object. So naturally, we only want to run this if this is the owning client. 
Reconciliation must be done first. This will correct the client's position to as it is on the server and replay cache client input. When using reconcile on the client, default should be passed in as the data and false for as server. This is the data default and false for as server. If I go down to that method real quick, you'll see that I have the data here, the reconciled data and the as server boolean. And just to clarify what those essentially mean one more time is whenever the client side is running the method, you will pass in false for as server. If the server side is running the method, you will pass in true. And again, when using the reconciliation or reconcile method, you pass in default for the client. It will automatically use the data from the server. So you don't actually have to specify anything. Next, I will make my move data. This will be the data again, how the object should be moved. And as I showed you before, it just contains inputs in my example. I'm going to go to the gather inputs method to show you what that looks like. Gather inputs take local inputs of the client and puts them into move data. When no inputs are available, the method is exited early. Note that the data is set to default at the very beginning of the method. You'll see this later as well when the server sends reconcile. The data will send redundantly to help ensure it goes through and it will also stop sending data that hasn't changed after a few iterations. This is all automatic. You really don't have to do anything for this. If you recall, the move method was called with the data that was output from my gather inputs and that move method is right down here. So let's go ahead and talk about that. You can use as server to know if the server is calling this method or the client. Replaying may be true as client when the inputs are being replayed. When you call move, replaying is false as you are manually calling the method. However, when the client reconciles, cache inputs are replayed automatically. This is in part how prediction works. A good example of how you might use the replaying boolean is to show a special effect when jumping. When replaying is false, you are calling the method from your code and perhaps if input indicates the player is jumping, you will want to play audio or a special effect. However, when cache inputs are automatically replayed, the same jump input may be called multiple times, but replaying will be true. You can filter out playing the audio and special effects multiple times by not running the logic if replaying is true. And finally, where you actually see the logic of this method, I'm just adding force based on the input that my client has passed in, multiplying it by the move rate, and applying that force to the rigid body. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. Let's go back up and visit the server side of the on tick method. All you have here is the move default true. Server has to move the same as client. This helps keep the object in sync. Pass in default for the data and true for as server. The server will automatically know which data to use when as server is true. Like the client in reconciliation, the server knows what data to use when you are calling the replicate method. So you can pass in default for the data. And also like when calling move on the client, you don't have to pass in the replaying boolean. I mentioned earlier that you only need the on post tick method if you are using a physics based controller. The reason for this is, is because the object's position, rotation, and velocities will be changed after the physics simulation. So you'll want to send the data back after that simulation, and that would be done on post tick. If you are not using a physics-based controller, then the data should have been updated immediately, and you can also send it right after the move here in the base is server check. Going down to the on post tick method, you can see again, this is pretty much just comments. However, this is extremely important. You will build the reconciled data using the current data of the object. This is what's sent to the client and the client will be reset using these values. Again, it's extremely important to send anything that might affect the movement, position, and rotation of the object. This includes, but is not limited to, transform position and rotation, rigid body velocities, colliders, etc. Explained further, if you're using prediction on a vehicle that is controlled by wheel colliders, those colliders most likely will behave independently of the vehicle route. You must send the collider's position, rotation, and other values that can change from movement or affect movement of the vehicle. Another example would be running with stamina. If running depends on stamina, you'll also want to send back stamina along with the running state that the client can adjust their side locally if it differs. If stamina somehow existed on the client but not on the server, then the server would move slower and a desync would occur. If you did not send stamina slash run state back to the client, the client would continue to desync until they also ran out of stamina. Another very important thing, if you're using an asset that uses physics internally, there is a fair chance you will need to expose values of that asset which affect movement 
or you can ask the author to make the asset support prediction. When all data is reset properly, the chances of a desync are very low and near impossible when not using physics. Even when a desync does occur, it's often incredibly small and will be corrected without any visual disturbances. There are some cases, however, where a desync is serious enough the client may teleport to the corrected value. I've included a component to help reduce any visual jitter during large desyncs. I'll demonstrate that component after we finish covering the code. Just below, I create my reconcile data, again, using the position rotation and velocities of the rigid body. We already talked about that. After building the data to send back to the client, I pass it into the reconcile method while using true for as server. Again, you use true when the server is sending data to the client and false when the client is sending data to the server. Like the move method, you should call the reconcile method every tick on both the server and the client. Fish networking internally knows if there is new data to send or not and will not waste bandwidth by regularly resending unchanged data. That about sums up the code. There was one more thing I wanted to mention. On your replicate method, so my move method, you'll want to make sure that it has the replicate attribute and this does require using fishnet object prediction as seen here and you'll want the reconcile method to use the reconcile attribute. Back in the editor on the network manager, you'll want to add the time manager component to your network manager. By default, this is not added, so you'll just go to add component and then add on time manager. Once added, you will take the physics mode and change that from unity, which will be the default, to time manager. When it's set to unity, that means that physics will run normally on fixed update. However, we don't want that. We want the prediction to manage the physics itself, and that's done internally by setting the physics mode to time manager. I'm not going to be covering the buffered inputs in this video. Lastly, I mentioned I have a component to handle desyncs, and I'm going to talk about that now. The player we simulated was the first player prefab, and that's the one I have selected now. You can see it's only this root object. And all we have on it is the rigid body, the network transform, the networked object, and the prediction motor we just covered. Now I did say earlier that the movement was being done without using a network transform. If you look at the settings on my network transform, you'll see that it is not client authoritative. And you can see that this is unchecked. You will also see that send to owner is unchecked as well. This indicates that the client cannot control this object, that only the server has control of it. And by having send to owner unchecked, that's saying that it will replicate the object only to spectators or non owners and it will not replicate it to the owner. There's no reason to replicate it to the owner because the prediction reconcile does that. This particular prefab does not have any protection against desync jitter. Even though if you do desync, it's likely going to be so small that any visual disturbances will go unnoticed. But if you do want to add a little bit of something, I have an example here of my desync player along with the script desync smoother and I'll talk about how to use that. The first thing you might notice is that on my desync player I still have the collider and the rigid body but I don't have the mesh. The visual components are on my capsule here and of course you can order them however you like but the important part is is that the visual part of your asset or prefab needs to be separate from the part that actually moves from the physics and the reconcile. So if I go over to my capsule you'll see I have my capsule mesh and the mesh renderer, and I have the desync smoother. What this will do is if your object were to desync, it would actually place the visuals, so anything under the desync smoother, back to where it was before the desync, and it'll smooth the differences out over time. In my case, I have the duration set to 0.1, which is 100 milliseconds. So if there does happen to be a desync, it will smooth it out over 100 milliseconds. You can set whatever you like. Here I have a buildup and the client is going to move smoothly. This is because it's moving at the same move rate as the server. And as I mentioned, a desync is almost unlikely to occur. Now I'm going to bump up the speed on the move rate, which will almost definitely force a desync. It actually will force a desync, I noticed for a fact, but it still might be a little hard to see. Now as I move around, you can see that it's a tiny bit jumpier, and this is because I'm actually moving three times faster than I should be on the client, but the server is correcting it. Right now, I'm using the regular player controller. I'm going to replace it with the desync one I showed you. Now I'm moving around, and it is a little bit smoother than before, that's for certain. However, you can still barely see that there are some desyncs. Now I want to show you that it is indeed working. Take a look up here at my scene view. I'm going to change the smoothing duration to something a little more drastic. I'll make it half a second to demonstrate. This is going to put the visuals behind half a second when there is a desync. Now if I move up closer here, and if I actually select the player capsule, 
you can see where the collider actually is and where the visual part of it is. So the collider is the actual representation of the object. That's where it is on the server. Visual part is where it is on the client because they're cheating and they think they're going somewhere, but they're really not. Keep in mind that was an extreme example and the client was cheating. Under normal conditions where the client is playing fair, these things are very unlikely to happen and even when they do, they're going to be so minor, they probably won't even go noticed. Hope you enjoyed this video and you can check out the description for links to the source code as well as my Discord if you want to hop in and chat.